All right, so in this video, I'm going to explain the concept of dynamic memory allocation. So I've written a small program here. I have main. Within this main function, I have a constant integer size and array with 10 elements, basically, and they're initialized with zero. And then I have uh, a function called print array, where I pass the array and the size. And print array basically accepts the array and the size and creates a loop uh, to print each element of the array. Part of this loop, I have this loop counter that I use uh, to make iterations, right? So if I want to run this program, the way I would go about this is just go ahead and compile it and link it, okay? And if once I do this, um, the code, the executable code is actually stored in a file on disk called main. Now, if I do a, a dot slash main and I hit enter, as soon as I hit enter, the operating system creates an OS process, an operating system process to run my program. And this operating system process has a layout for my program that looks like this. So it has a number of regions, okay? And I'm going to focus on an, uh, uh, some of these regions. So there's this code region where the uh, executable file is actually loaded here into memory. So it's loaded from, from the disk into memory in this region. But there's also some important other regions such as the runtime stack and the heap, right? So let's take a look at these regions. Now, these variables are created as local variables for the main, right? So variables that are declared this way are local within their scope, right? Uh, they're declared within main, so they're local to main. Similarly, I have this print array function that has these uh, arguments and this uh, local variable as well. All of these are local to print array. All of these local variables are declared, are, are created on the runtime stack. One interesting feature of variables that are created on the runtime stack is that they're automatically managed. So what does that mean? That basically means that as soon as I get out of scope, you know, let's say I'm within this function, so this variable, this one, and this one are created. And as soon as I get out of this scope, I return, these variables are cleaned up for me automatically. So they're automatically managed, right? So um, that's, that's the, uh, one of the most important features of stuff that are created or, or space that is created on the stack. Now, um, there are certain cases where this is not ideal for us. Um, for example, you know, uh, what if we want to um, task a function with the uh, task of creating some space and initializing that space, and we would like to use that space somewhere else? So if we created it as a local variable, then um, as soon as we return from that function, that local variable is deleted and then we cannot uh, access it outside. So that's one limitation. The other li limitation is that uh, stuff that are allocated on the stack, uh, we need to know the size of that uh, space uh, at uh, compile time. That means while we're writing the code, we need to know the exact size. So in this case, we know that the size is 10. Now. One thing that you could do if you don't know the exact size is basically create um, a maximum possible size. I mean, imagine you're working with a, uh, a course where you may have a variable number of students uh, in that course. Um, so you would like to write a code that may sometimes handle 10 students, some other times handle 1,000 students. So what you could do is just go ahead and create an array of 1,000 elements. But the uh, downside of this is that uh, when you're working with a smaller uh, course, um, you're wasting space. The other thing that you could do um, in this case is actually um, creating a variable, not a constant, just a regular variable, and maybe accepting that variable from the user and um, you know creating the array on the stack with that variable. Now, this feature is not available on all C++ standards. Um, it's available in C. Uh, and some C++ standards, and some compilers provided, some others don't. 
Um, but either way, it's a very dangerous feature to use. Uh, and, and the reason for that is that, uh, once again, it's going to be created on the stack, but the size is not known until at runtime. So what if you're creating an array where you're accepting the size from the user and the user inputs a very large um, variable or a very large value? Um, that may uh, overflow the stack and, and overflowing the stack may end up with crashing your program or even in certain cases if the data is coming from outside may even uh, cause a security issue, a very well-known stack overflow uh, vulnerability, right? So you don't want to do this. The alternative to both of these scenarios, you know, the uh, unknown size at the time of compilation and maintaining the, uh, the space after returning from the function is to do uh, dynamic memory allocation. Now with me dynamic memory allocation, data is actually stored on the heap, right? And the data that is actually stored in the heap is not automatically managed. The programmer is supposed to manage that space, meaning you allocate it when you need it and you delete it when you're done. It's not going to be deleted automatically for us, right? So let's see how we can allocate space dynamically on the heap, right? So to allocate space dynamically on the heap, we need to use the new operator, okay? And then we specify the type. And let me say I just want to clear uh, to create a single integer, okay? So this is how I do this. Now the new operator is going to return, basically it's going to create a space on the heap and return a pointer that points to that space. So in order to access that space, we need to create a pointer. And because it points to an integer, it needs to be integer star, right? I call it uh, PTR, okay? And then um, I'm going to capture the value that is returned from the new operator into this pointer. And from that point on, I could just access that space by dereferencing the pointer. I could just say start PTR equal 5 or something like std um, uh, cout star PTR. Okay. So this space is allocated uh, dynamically on the heap. Right. And I can just go ahead and compile this. Uh, G plus plus main underscore dynamic dash O main underscore dynamic and let me just remove this dot CPP compiles and no issues and then I can just go ahead and run it okay it runs and gives me the value 5 now this program has a major flow which is a memory leak just like I said this memory is not managed for us. We need to manage it. We need to delete it whenever we are done with it. Uh, right now, this program is leaking memory. And memory leak is one of the major problems with uh, C++ programs, uh, to the point that many programming languages don't even give access to pointers. Uh, one major reason is that uh, programmers uh, mismanage the space and, and, and cause memory leaks. And, and the consequence of a memory leak is that uh, your program uh, uh, memory footprint is going to keep growing as the program is running uh, for a longer period of times. And then uh, uh, eventually your program may become unstable and, and just crash. Okay. So what we're supposed to do is clean up the space when we're done. And to clean up the space, we use the delete operator and we just pass the pointer. Okay. So, well, as you can see, even if we don't delete, Nothing happens, but there is a memory leak. I mean, the compiler doesn't give me an error for that. There are tools that I can use to analyze my program for memory, leak, memory leaks, such as Valgrind. Uh, but, uh, you know, we're not covering this here. So um, this is the proper way of doing things, uh, basically uh, deleting that space after we're done with it. Now, this is basically... Uh, 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 allocating a single element. What if I want to do something like the scenario that I've just mentioned? You know, I have a course with variable number of students, so I would like to create the space at runtime when I know the number of students. So what I could do in this case is something like this. So I could um, create a variable that holds a number of students, number of students, initialize it with zero here. Um, and then I could do, go ahead and ask the user to enter the number of students. So something like how many students 
students that you have. Okay, and then I could accept this from the user, something like CN or, you know, a number of students. Now, at runtime, the number of students is going to be determined. So what I could do is just, I could go ahead and create a pointer. I'll call it ARR because I want to use it as an array because it actually points to the first element of a block of memory. And in order to create a block of memory, I use new, each element is an integer, and then the number of elements between square brackets, which is number of elements, okay? So this actually creates an array, a block of integers, uh, with number of students, uh, basically the number of elements equal to the number of students at runtime. I did not need to know this at compile time. Now, um, from that point on, I, you know, I handle this just like I handle any array, right? So I could, for example, iterate over it. I could just say i equals zero. i is less than uh, number of students uh, plus plus i. And within the body, I could j say something like arr or array of i equal maybe zero or accepted from the user or whatever, okay? Now note that uh, I use the array notation because this pointer actually points to the first element, okay? So uh, uh, I can use the array notation or the pointer notation. So in this case, I use the array notation, which is, uh, I believe, uh, more readable, okay? So uh, once I'm done with this, what I'm supposed to do next is delete the space. Now, because this is a block of memory, I need to delete it with the array notation. So with the square brackets, and once again, I just pass the uh, name of the pointer that I used to uh, point to that space. So this is how I create a single element. This is how I create a block of elements, right? The only difference is that I need to specify how many elements I have. And this is how I clean up a block of elements, okay? So this is how I create memory dynamically on the heap. Uh, uh, within my program. I just wanted to mention one more thing. Um, if, let's say I'm, I'm writing a class um, and my class, part of my class, part of the objects of my class, there is some dynamic memory involved. So here's a student class, there's a name, and there is a pointer that I'm going to use to uh, allocate a, a variable size space, right? Um, to basically store grades. And this is basically the number of grades. And in the constructor, I get the name and the number of grades. I do the initialization using constructor initialization list. You could do, uh, you could do it otherwise, but this is a preferred way. And then within the constructor, I create a space dynamically, right? And make grades point to that space. So part of this object, there is now dynamic space. Now, to properly manage this space, I need to usually provide a destructor. And in the destructor, you know, I, I, it has the same name of the class uh, with the, uh, this tilde before. It's called student because the class is called student. And then within this space, what I do is just I basically delete this uh, uh, dynamically allocated uh, space. Delete this are grades. Now, the destructor is called automatically when the object needs to be destructed. For example, when we go out of scope, if the object is uh, declared as a local variable within a function, for example, as soon as we get out of scope, the destructor is automatically called and we ensure that the dynamic space that is part of this object is also deleted, okay? Uh, so um, this is how we handle dynamic space within a class um, and that's pretty much it for uh, dynamic memory allocation and I'll see you in the next video.